Hello everybody, welcome back to the series of ultrasound physics and today we'll start with the uh, sonography instrumentation and we know that the ultrasound system is made of several components and these are the basic components of the ultrasound system. We discussed already the transducer and also uh, we had a few, few words about the pulsar, we finished this and today we'll start by the beamformer. In general, the pulsar is sending the pulse to the beamformer, and then the beamformer will send this to the transducer. This will be converted to sound waves. Sound waves are reflecting back to the transducer, converted to signals. Signals are electric signals. They are delivered to the beamformer, and then from the beamformer to the receiver. Accordingly to this, you can see that the beamformer is connected to the pulsar and to the receiver. As you see here, this is the beamformer, and it, as we mentioned earlier, it has connection with the pulsar and the receiver. So according to this, as we mentioned earlier, the beamformer is functioning with the beamformer, with the pulsar, and beamformer with the receiver. Why? Why is that? Why is the beamformer that specific in this job? Because it has specific ability, which is uh, responsible for what you call the minute time delays. No, no other parts in the ultrasound system can do that, can apply minute time delays to the electric voltages either going to the transducer or received back to the, uh, uh, to, to the beamformer and then to the receiver. So as we see here, this is the main job or the main function of the beamformer that is capable of applying minute time delays. Sometimes minute time delays are also called phasing. Phasing, P-H-A-S-I-N-G. Phasing is another description of the minute time delays. So as you mentioned earlier that the beamformer is functioning with the pulsar and the receiver. So we we'll start with the pulsar here. So it's integrated part of the pulsar during its transmit time. So tra you know that there is transmit time and there is receive time. Okay, the transmit time or the on time or the pulse time, this is the time that the beamformer is integrated with the pulsar. And what happens here that the, 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 the beamformer is responsible for apply, applying minute time delays in electronic steering, in electronic focusing, and also is responsible for apodization. So the beamformer here is playing good part in steering the beam and focusing the beam. So as we look at here, this is the uh, representation of the elements, active elements, PZTs, and each one is has, it has its own wire. These wires are, all of them are going back to here to the beamformer from the transducer to the beamformer. These wires are delivering the electric spikes or the voltages from the beamformer down to the is PZTs. So by the, by the spe specific ability of the beamformer to apply minute time delays. The beamformer is capable of sending these electric voltages with specific fashion. And the fashion here, or the pattern, is uh, it, in the steering, it starts by the what you call a slope. So we have a, a slope made of electric voltages, and the angle of this slope is responsible for the steering of the beam. For example, this beam here is, uh, oh, sorry, this uh, slope here is responsible for, uh, if I put here the beam, the sound beam will go in this direction. Okay, let me put another color, it would be much easier to follow. So this is here, the direction of the sound beam if I'm having this angle of a slope. If the angle is different, I will get the, the beam steer to the other direction here. So steering of the beam depends on what? Minute time delays in a slope with different angles of the slope, I will get the beam steering. So who is doing this? The beam formal. Okay, so different angles of slope, it will be ended by steering. Another shop of the uh, beam former also is electronic focusing. Again, minute time delays, to send up electric voltages in a different pattern now, which is a curved, curved pattern. The curvature here will be responsible for sending the sound beam in this direction and in this direction. So what ends here, I'll get the beam focus. So again, 
the curvature will send the beam in a focus pattern. The height of the curvature will deliver the, the sound beam with different focal points. So accordingly to this, the beamformer is responsible for electronic focusing and uh, the curvature or the height of the curvature here will, de will determine how the focal point is. Is it close or away from the transverse? So uh, as we see here, we have different heights of the, the, of, the, of the focal points, and this is what we call multifocal points. So we can have each pulse, each pulse delivered with a certain focal, with a certain curvature. I will get a focal point here for some. Another pulse that is delivered with another focal, with another curvature, I will get, for example, another focal point here. So according to this, I have different focal points based on different curvatures of the of the pulses the the the, the electric voltages that are delivered to the to the beamformer here so uh, i will get here electronic focusing electronic focusing here i don't have to apply any acoustic lens or making the pct cut in a curvature no everything is quiet but i'm i'm using different uh, curvatures of uh, of the uh, of the electric voltages delivered to the PCTs. Okay, so what are the criteria of this electronic focusing? We have two criteria. Number one, they are adjustable. I can make them uh, shallower or deeper, shallower or deeper. This is adjustable uh, focal point. What else? I, I might have multiple focal points. So electronic focusing is characterized by two things, being multiple and being adjustable being multiple, multiple focal points, and adjustable focal points, these are criteria of the electronic focusing. So as adjustable, yes, adjustable. Another thing is the apodization. Apodization actually is a different voltages, uh, the uh, different voltage of the spikes, electric spikes. They will be delivered to the PZTs in different voltages. What does it mean, different voltages? I have here low voltage delivered to the periphery and a higher voltage delivered in the center. So what happens here, I can get rid of the, uh, of the lobes, lobe artifacts. You know the lobes or lobe artifacts? Okay, I can get rid of this by applying a polarization. Is it adjustable? No, I cannot adjust it. It comes with the setting of the machine. So some machines were delivering the ultrasound beam with the apodization, I will get rid of the lobes and I will get a lot, uh, rid of a lot of the artifacts that are caused by this uh, uh, lobe artifacts. So uh, what is the apodization? Delivering of ultrasound volt of, of the electric voltages with different voltages from the center to the, to the periphery. The center part will have higher voltages, the peripheral part will have lower voltages and this is called a position. Okay, you can memorize it. A means no, poda means leg. So as if you're cutting the legs of the sound beam, which are the grating lobes. So we mentioned earlier that we have a curved and a slope pattern. Okay, so they are actually delivered in a combined form. So I will get here, for example, this is the slope with the curve. So this is here the first, the first electric voltage to be delivered to the to the to this PCT, and this is here the last one. And according to this, I have a slope, but this slope here is a curved slope. So you can see that we have a curvature and a slope pattern. According to this, I will get a steering of the beam with focal points. So different focal points, so as I have to get steered and focused sound beam. Steered and focused sound beam is, uh, is attained by what? I'm having a curved and sloped electric voltage pattern delivery to the PZTs. So these are the functions of the, of the beam former together with the pulsar. Again, as you mentioned, we have the beam former it has some integrated job or function with the receiver. So the beam former here acting with the receiver in two parts. First, what you call the dynamic receive focusing, and the second is dynamic aperture. What would be the, the situation here? 
in dynamic receive focusing, what happens here? We know that is during the receive time. Somebody would say, we know focusing with the delivery of the ultrasound pulse or ultrasound uh, beam. It has uh, uh, focal points, yes. But is there focusing during the receive time? Yes. And this is the job also of the beam former. What happens here? Imagine that this is the reflector and the ultrasound waves are coming or the signals coming from the reflector. They usually go in this curvature. So based on the history, this is the front wave that will touch the transducer. Actually, as it touched the transducer, part of the elements are activated first before the rest. So for example, assuming that here, this is the, the, the point of touching here, I will get the, the elements here in this area will be activated. And that's why they will start to send these electric voltages or electric signals on their own wires upwards. But look at this, the others are not. So I will get here different timing. And you know, based on the 13 microsecond rule, that different timing means different depths. Uh, so according in the, in the patient, this is a single reflection, a single reflector, but on the screen, I will get different reflections based on the timing because not all the elements are activated at the same time. So what happens here? They will ask the beam former do its own job. Okay, you know his job, do beam for the, uh, uh, minute time delays? Yes, I will do that. So I keep hold of this. So these elements, or sorry, these voltages that are delivered earlier, okay, the beam former will take care of them for a while delay them for a while till the rest of the elements are activated and the signals are received by the by the beam former and then the beam former will release these as one reflection so the the receiver will get one one reflection out from a single reflector single reflector it will give here on the receiver a single reflection why because the beam former can apply minute time delays to those signal that are received earlier, keep a hold on them for a while till the rest of the active elements are activated. And then the whole signals are gathered together in the same time delivered to the receiver. We call this what? This is focusing during receive time. So by applying necessary minor time delays to what? To the earlier received signals, these ones. Okay, allowing all the received signals together to be delivered to reach the receiver in, a fo in one focus or in one point. The next job of the uh, beamformer during the receive time or integrated job of the beamformer with the receive time is called dynamic aperture. Dynamic aperture here is during transmission and during receive time. During transmission, what happened? We know that when you have a in the in the, uh, you, you remember the beam, the, the anatomy of the beam, we know that the, the focal point of the, of the ultrasound beam is related to the diameter of the, of the, of the active element, right? The, uh, the diameter, if I'm having a wide diameter, I will get deeper focus, right? If I'm having a narrow diameter of the PCT, I will get a shallower focus. This is one of the things that we discussed earlier. Okay, so if I'm having here, all the elements are activated at the same time, I can get a deeper focus, right? Because I'm having a wide element. But here in the array transducer, we don't call it wide element, we call it wide aperture. So the aperture is what? Is the number of elements that are in harmony together and activated in the same time. So if I'm having a wide aperture, I will get deeper focus. What if I'm having a narrow aperture, I will get shallow focus. So this is during transmit time. Okay, during the receive time, what happens? Okay, again, if I'm having the active element, sorry, the reflector here, and I'm having all the waves are going back to the transducer, again, instead of putting some the time delays, okay, only the, the single part or the central part of the active elements will be delivering the, the pulse. So that the electric voltage that are form it here because of the this touch point here, okay? The electric voltage that are delivered here will be delivered to the, to the transducer, to the receiver. So according to this, I will get what we call dynamic aperture. For example, deeper reflectors, I will get all the elements are uh, in, in, in function, in duty. If I'm having shallow, shallow focus, shallow reflector, I'll get a small part of the active elements are in duty. According to this, what you call 
dynamic aperture. If I'm having deeper reflectors, I get all the elements are in, in, in time, so they are in action. I'm getting here a wide aperture. If I'm having a shallow reflector, I will get a narrow aperture, and that's why from the shallow area, this is the the early receptions, early waves to be received are in shallow reflectors, and this will get me a, a small aperture. As the 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 the, the transducer is listening to deeper structures, it will start to utilize more wide aperture. So that's why we call it dynamic. So this is here we call dynamic aperture. It's, it's changing it's the number of elements to be utilized based on the depth where the received echoes are coming from. So this is here, it's called the dynamic aperture. Thank you, and I hope that is beneficial, and see you later in another lecture.